We know that whether if it's a marriage or a relationship, doesn't matter what it is. If we don't give undivided attention, it's gonna fall apart. You know, it's no good unless we give undivided attention to God. He knows the heart, and He knows each and every one of us better than we know ourselves. So today. Today is the 18th of the 12th. 2.16, we're at Paradise Now Church, Brisbane. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. First of all, um, what's going on around us? Once again, is a shadow of the signs of the times what you hear on the news radio uh, is a shadow of the times we're in sometimes not always exact but a shadow and uh, there was a wild brawl down in Melbourne Flinders Street Station they described it as chaos might even be a pale horse look chaos and there were scores of police brought in to try and stop this brawl with about 50 people in it like obviously a gang territory arrangement and just went berserk um, there's also been violence in Mayfield in Newcastle uh, Scores of youth attacked a police van. That tells you something too, doesn't it? Hey? There's no respect for authority. There's no respect for the given authorities. How can there be respect for God? The great authority. There are officials and then there are officials over officials and then there's the great official. How can there be respect for Jesus? How can we expect to see that if there's no respect? And it filters down into the house, doesn't it? It filters down into the community and the house. We see it as a sign of the times, a, 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 a last day's sign of, of rebellion. Anarchy, chaos, it's all part and parcel with the God of this world that we read about in Corinthians, who is Satan, who loves to disturb and, and, and bring dissension and destroy and trouble. Jesus never came to do that. He came to give us peace deep within and then we don't behave like that we're not brawling in the streets we're, 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 we're not destroying not only public property and and, and private property but a, a, the a property of the authority right? if the government of this country and every other country only woke up and repented and said, look, we, we should be supporting the true message of Jesus, which will bring peace to our communities, the families, and, and, and the mums and dads will be convicted of their selfishness, pig-headedness, and keep the money that they get to feed the children and clothe the children and look after the children and look after the household and pay their bills rather than spending it on ice. It's not going to happen any other way except through Christ Jesus. The ways of men and women seem right in their own eyes but the way it always leads to death. It all appears good, you know. Oh, oh, there's a young girl, and we, and we, 
We loved each other so much, we had sex. Now you lusted the girl so much, you had sex. And she lusted you so much, not love, you had sex. And then, you know, we went on and the child, something happened to the child and ran off somewhere and the, they split up and there's, there's no paperwork to uh, hold it together and there's no responsibility or accountability. It just goes on and on and on. And the child grows up the same way. Because one of them or both of them didn't want to do what Jesus said. And wait, if you really love a girl, you'll marry her. If the girl really loves the man or the young man, she'll marry him. She'll be a one-man woman, he'll be a one-woman man. Can someone say amen? And that's the way it is. This is the way the Lord, the Lord does things. The way of ways of men and women seem right in their own mind. It seemed that it was all right. It seemed like we were in love. I only cancelled a young man yesterday. I had a call-out job in Dara, and he needed counselling. And, and it, some with some young lady, and now he's all upset. And they got uh, they had a child, and all sorts. Come on in, sister Stephanie, and brother. Come on in, brother. Come on in and sit down. And the bottom line is the, the young man and, and, and the young woman, they, they had an intimate relationship and they had a child and now they're split up. And the child's paying the price. Because they didn't do it the Lord's way. Even though this young man said that uh, he was born again. I don't know, born again what all? We need to be born again from above. We, we, we need to truly repent. As we see with Brother Shane, he truly repented. Brother Shane, uh, needle in his arm for 14 years. But he truly repented. He said, I've had enough of this nightmare. You know, I, I don't want this no more. A lot of people think, oh, it's the devil. Oh, it's this, it's that. No, what about you? Where do you come into the picture? Eh? We've got a part in this. Eh? We must take heed to ourselves and, and the doctrine of Jesus and get involved with Jesus. Like a true relationship between a bride and a groom. Eh? And then... We, we must be not only careful to take heed to ourselves and the doctrine, but to teach others the same way. And if they are willing, willing to hear, they too will be saved. And the first one that Lord Jesus saves you from is you. Because my, as an alcoholic, I, I was an alcoholic and a drug user and LSD and um, marijuana and hash oil and... But I was my worst enemy. Drunk eight days a week. Drugged out of my brain nine days a week. Chain smoker. Had no fingers were not yellow from nicotine. They were nearly black. They were chocolate. And I loved my Benson and Hedges and Stuyvesant and White Ox. I had the White Ox when I was in jail. But I mean, that's all they give you. Even the Salvos used to come and give us... A packet of beds in the hedges at Christmas time. I mean, that's lovely and godly, isn't it? <laughs> I want to be waiting there. You know, we'll be waiting for the where's the stivers, and you know, and then have some soupy video about something, and then I'll be sitting there, going, you know. It has to get real. We, we have to get real. And then the Lord saves us from ourselves, sin, Satan, the wrath to come and the hellfire. And we have this wonderful peace. Even though all around us singing sand, even though in Brother Shane's case, even though when he, when he truly repented, he had issues coming 
bombarding his head and all sorts of things. Ah, oh, these demons. These, I've gone crazy. I said, hang in there. You hang in there. They can't hang around forever. They've got to move on. Hey? In the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. They can't... When you go home tonight, it's pitch black about midnight. Make sure you're in, in the dark room and turn the light on. Is there any darkness? It has to go. It has to go. Hang on, I just... Yeah, I just turned it on. So. Has to go. The darkness has to go. That's the beauty, isn't it? So, what's going on around us? Uh, Centrelink is apparently, by the news now, turning a blind eye to polygamy. And uh, multiple wives, taxpayers paying the bill. Obviously, Eastern stuff. Muslim, most probably. I mean, where is the government? What are they thinking? With pensioners struggling to pay the bills. Just bills. Electricity. You know, phone. And they're doing this sort of thing. Um, what else is going on around us? Here's some uh, useful information. The rosella plant. The flower is used for, if you boil it up, you can use that for a sore throat. The leaves of the rosella plant, you can use for, a, for your curry. And the fruit, obviously used for jam and uh, purees. Why did I say that? I mean, who gives a rats about rosella plant? I'm just confirming once again. As I watched this documentary, I had to praise the Lord. Forgot all about the documentary. And I've always believed that there's plants out there that can do more than three things. Everything is there. Everything. And we even see it confirmed in the scriptures where... It says that the, uh, the, the plants in the New Jerusalem and the trees are for healing by the water. You know, God is God. You say, oh, I've got this problem. Oh, and I, I, can't, I can't shake it. Of course you can't. And when you accept that, then you'll be able to let God to shake it for you. On true repentance. On true repentance. Hey? You lead the horse to the water. Hey? We've got a nice little trough here today. And you can lead the horse to the water, but you ever try to make a horse drink water? Sorry, I don't even think Samson could do that. <laughs> it's up to us if we drink. I drank, and I never wanted, I just, all right. Oh, lovely. Mmm. Ah, it's very nice. <laughs> Would you like a drink? You know, and I've been on the streets for 29 years. <laughs> Would you like a drink? <laughs> oh, what are you so happy about? Oh, psst. Here, have a drink. <laughs> hey? I had a drink and I tasted and seen the Lord is good. I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. I'm not sort of... Oh, yeah, I used to be an alcoholic. You know, I go to AA and oh, my name's Bill Brown and I'm an alcoholic and that's a lie because God never made alcoholics. He made people in his likeness. He never made alcoholics or prostitutes, homosexuals or lesbians. That's your choice. That's your choice. I only got an email a couple of days ago from a pastor in the Philippines he said, I've had enough. I've, I've been to colleges. I've been to Baptist Bible College. I've been to the uh, uh, Advanced Christian College in, in the Philippines, Bacolod City. And, I, I, you know, I've been to Paradise, but I've never been to me, you know. And I, I've been to, uh, 
you know, a Korean church where I was a pioneer. And I've done all these things. But he says, I asked myself recently, am I speaking the truth? Is this really what Jesus says? So he asked me to teach him. How crazy. But we've had this before in the Philippines. A Baptist theologian, him and his wife, decorated Baptists in theology. And they asked me to teach them. It's sort of like a Nicodemus Jesus thingy, isn't it? You know, Nicodemus. The, the teacher of the Jews. I mean, you don't get any higher, do you? But sort of came to Jesus by night, you know, under the hoodie, you know. Just in case someone might see him because he's so intelligent and, you know, has that big synagogue down the road there, you know, where all the people go who live in sin. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he asked Jesus, hey, what's this born again stuff, you know? How does that happen? Like, how does that sort of work? <laughs> and then Jesus said, you must be born of spirit and water, and here is the water. Not baptism. We're born of the, the implanted, infallible, engrafted word of God. By the power of the Holy... It all happens by the Holy Ghost power. Amen, he says. What's your name, brother? Peter. Brother Peter. Simon Peter. Let's give him a hand. And, and don't forget his dear mum, Sister Stephanie. Let's give her a hand. Hallelujah. Sister Stephanie's been down a few dry gullies in her time. As soon as I was talking to Sister Stephanie the other day, I said... Uh, you know, you young ladies around 45 year old, she's nearly 70 or over 70 or whatever. And I thought, wow, that's kept by the grace of God there. And as soon as I started talking to her and she started telling me about the dry gullies, she's been down the religions and churches, I thought of Sister Sue and the churches she'd been in, the disappointments and, and uh, Sister... Um, Stephanie was, was saying, talk about the sexual immorality in the churches. And I said, well, you're telling me nothing there. Right? I mean, the Lord Jesus is coming for a, a bride that is spotless, without a blemish, without a spot. He's not coming back for a Dalmatian church. So we need to get that well and truly planted in our heads and our hearts and walk on with the fear of God, amen. Okay, $3 billion is going to be spent in the Santee season. We don't do Santee season here, do we? Still haven't got any takers. I offer $100 cash for someone to show me Christmas in the Bible or Santa Claus, no one. Ta no one. I said, if you take the challenge and you can't show me, you can give me 100 That'd be nice. No one took the challenge because they know it's not there. But yet they still continue on. There will be around 2,000 tonnes of pig consumed in Australia this year. So it's not about lamb, is it? It's about ham. <laughs> 2,000 tonnes of pig, of ham. Hey? It's not about the lamb. It's about ham. The pig, the insult to the Jew. As long as we're insulting the Jewish king, everything's okay. As right? long as the devil, the God of this world, has got people insulting Jesus every day, in every way possible. That's his objective. He hates Jesus. Lucifer, who became Satan, behind the throne room, or behind the throne, I should say, wings spread, beautifulest of all cherubs, but jealous, that stinking jealousy of Jesus, seated at the right hand of Father. I'll take over, he says. Hey? And Father said, no, you won't. Out you go. And if you've got any angels here that are in cahoots with you, they can go too. That's the only way to run a church, isn't it? 
If you want to be a little devil, get out and take the other devils with you. <laughs> That's the only way I can think of it. Look what you got left. Only a holy remnant. You're not going to be left with the mega church, I tell you. So, let's move right along. Brian Houston, Hill Song, I call it Hell Song. He was on the TV this morning and he was talking about uh, ministry and, and, and your uniqueness and my uniqueness. He says, what are we basically, he said, what are we breeding, princes or paupers? Now, I'll let you work that one out for yourself. What, it, what are we breeding in the churches, princes or paupers? Well, I go straight to Revelation 1, 6, and it says we're already kings and priests, not princes, kings and priests unto God. We can't be bogged down with this lie of the devil that everyone in the church and every minister needs to be filthy, filthy. Let me emphasize, filthy, rich. Because Paul the Apostle, in the writings of Corinthians, was looking for bread and water. He wasn't looking for an Angus burger. He was looking for bread, basic bread and water. That's what they give prisoners in those times, bread and water. And he was looking for bread and water. He said, I wear the clothes of the poor and I'm considered as the scum of the earth. What do you think of that? Right? Anyone want to be like the scum of the earth? They call the master of the church and the house Beelzebub. What are they going to call you? What are they going to call you? Oh, wonderful man. They're going to call you worse. Because you're under, you're an underling of the good shepherd. So let's go into the message today. They're just some things that I like to touch on. To show us the atmosphere that we're in. Hey? Today. These are the last days. Let's go into our message. We're going to be firstly reading out of Colossians chapter 2. We're doing a series, uh, brother and sister, for the last oh, 40 weeks. It's called Christos Confrontation. Let's go to Colossians 2, Colossians 2, and we're going to read only one verse. I, I can't go back over it all because we've done 40 plus messages in the one series. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. As long as possible. As long as possible. I'd, I'd like to stay here till night. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, hang on a minute. Mm. Mm. Uh, so we're in Colossians 2.14 We don't want to get bogged down hey, we, we want to rejoice Jesus wiped out the handwritings of requirements That was against us all Which was contrary to us And he has taken it out of the way Having nailed it to the cross. Can someone say amen? amen? Look at verse 15. Highly important. Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them at the tree. Triumphing over them in it. Now if we're going to be in Christ. We're going to reap of that exact blessing. We're going to triumph over the principalities and powers of the air. Can someone say amen? Can be in no other way. It cannot be any other way. If we're in Christ, if we're doing what Jesus says, that was Colossians 2, 14 and 15, where we're dealing with a, a defeated foe. We're dealing with a disarmed creature. Uh, Satan being disarmed, he, like... He's armless. You know what I mean? He, an armless man cannot hurt you. Unless he uses his feet or hooves in this case. And he hooves you. You know. But a disarmed man, a man who has no arms, cannot punch you. 
in the face because he's got no arms. You know what I mean? He's armless, isn't he? And that's like the devil. That's like the powers of darkness. As I said to the young man who called me out and I had to counsel yesterday and I went out, even though as the seven-day Adventists would say, oh, it's the Sabbath. Yesterday was the Sabbath. You shouldn't be doing things on the Sabbath. Okay. You know? You sort of sit there like a vegetable, like cabbage. We, the people of God, know that Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our rest. And there is no rest until we are in Him. In Him. In Him means doing what He says. You know, I know heaps of people that have met Jesus, but they're not in Him anymore. Oh, it didn't work for me. Yes, it did. You just didn't stay in there long enough. So we're dealing with the Christos Confrontation Series. We're learning how to confront the issues of our day, ourselves, our community, our lives, our nation, our world. Confronting, but in a Christ-like way. Not violently, not deceitfully but in the way that Christ would have us confront and we're down to the end confrontation the last letter is N we've deconstructed the word we've had 40 plus messages and we're down to the N which was nailed we use that word nailed and, 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 and nullified and then we've been milling around this N deconstructing the, the nailed N-A-I and, and, and the recent messages were uh, nailed and then we got into anchored as in N-A-I-L-E-D. Then we got into anchored and then we got into N-A-I was illuminated. And a great struggle comes when where eyes are open as the scriptures say uh, very clearly. And our recent messages with regarding illuminated and the light coming on uh light up you light up my life lord you light up my life and then the next message we done was you light up my day amen oh, who needs light in the day we do the word of god is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path and then uh last week's message was day and night light Wow. Hey? So uh, this week's message is going to come out of the writings of Acts 7. Let's go to Acts 7. And we're going to look at this week's message. We're still in illuminated. We're still in the light here. We have another message about the light. And then... N A I L E D. We've only got three letters after the I, and then the whole series will be finished. We're looking at about 50 messages in one series. Wow. So, let me say, let me say, uh, let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 7, and we're going to start reading in verse 51. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at Stephen with their teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God 
and Jesus standing at the right hand of God or Father and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of Father. Verse 57, Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. Verse 58, And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Verse 59, And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60 is our final verse. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That last verse tells you clearly of the power that Stephen had in Christ. I mean, who can do that? Who can, who can do that? Let's read it again, verse 60. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. As human beings, especially Adamic human beings, people that aren't born again, we have this, this thing of revenge, taking vengeance on people who have hurt us and done us wrong and we... We don't deserve it. But when we move in to Christ and we're in Christ, we no longer want to take vengeance on people because we know that the Lord said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. So in relation to confrontation and confronting the day, ourselves, our, the people around us, in, in relation to confronting uh, the community and how badly they may treat the saint or the follower of Jesus and the nation and, and the, the religious organisations, how badly they may treat you. These people were religious people that were stoning Stephen. Hey? They were religious, stinking, filthy religious people unclean let's read it acts 7 51 but before i start reading let me say the title of our message today is M mega mega might light you know jesus has given us light that is not uh mighty it's mega mighty the, when the light of Christ shone in my heart and in my life, my whole life changed. I don't know if you can show me a light bulb or a fluorescent light or a torch or, or, or a star in the heaven that can do that. Only the light of the Christ only the, the doctrine of Jesus can do that. And not even the doctrine of Jesus can change you. It cannot change you unless you obey. I tell you, there's power in application. You can read that book till the cows come home. As many men and religious hypocrites have come to me in 29 years all around the world where I've travelled and said, how many times have you read the Bible? And I've said, not once. Well, I've read the Bible 10 times. And then he starts to get angry. I said, well, it's of no use to you because you haven't obeyed it, have you? And I said, that's okay. I feel sorry for you. Because you don't have any power to obey. Because you don't have the Holy Ghost. When we have the Holy Ghost, 
We can do every single thing that Jesus said. Every single, if you want. As I said to the Filipino pastor, it's your choice. If you want me to disciple you, it's your choice. I said to the young man who had a child to a girlfriend that they were, they were in lust, I mean in love. I said to him yesterday, it's your choice. I come here to counsel you today. And we sat down there in Dara. And I said, I drove all the way here to tell you one thing. That the Holy Ghost told me, it's your choice. If you want to choose the way of Jesus, you will go free. If you want to choose your own way, you will stay confused and troubled and burdened. But Jesus says, come to me. Everyone who is laboring, doing it hard here, doing it hard here. You know, the, the woman loses her husband and she does it hard in the heart. Of course, because she was one with the husband. But Jesus says, come to me widows and I'll give you rest come to me you who lost your mother you who lost your brother I've lost my mother my mother died my brother died hey my brother had uh, issues mental issues he was on all sorts of drugs hey you name it but when he listened to what I said even though he's older than me I said you need to repent, Mark, and be born again. Truly, truly born again. And then the Lord will lift all up. Okay? I ministered in a, a mental institution, as they call them. And I used to go there and help the people there. And I'd walk in the place and they'd just come to me like bees to honey. And, and we had a chemistry because they knew that I cared for them. And not only that, they said, there's something different about you, Paul. And I, I didn't say, oh, well, that's because I'm a wonderful person. I said, no, that's the Holy Ghost. Would you like to have the Holy Ghost? Let's pray. And I used to pray with these people and they used to wait all week, they said. I, we wait all week to see you, Paul, to hear your words. And you know what happened? The psychiatric doctor said to me one day, you, you go and don't come back. You're not wanted here. You're, you're upsetting the patients. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm not upsetting the patients. You are upsetting the patients. But as you say, you're the authority here. Bye-bye. And I never went back. <laughs> we have mega... Might, light. Hey, you talk about Buzz Lightyear. Boy, put him aside. We have mega, might, light. We have the light of the Christ. Hey, we have the the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Listen to me. That's the spirit that led Elijah. That's the spirit that enabled Stephen in the midst of being stoned and hated and mocked. As it says, they ran at him, grinding their teeth. And he said, oh, Father, don't charge them. Lord Jesus, don't charge them. Let them off the hook. Hey? Is that what you're going to say when they abuse you and people come against you and they're talking about you behind your back and they're doing... You're going to say, it's okay. Can I shout you a coffee? Would you like a drink? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you know? And I didn't mind again Guinness now and then. So, mega, might, light. Is there any excuse? How can we confront ourselves? I'm starting with the man in the mirror. 
I'm starting with the man in the mirror. That's where I started. I had to have a good look at this ugly looking thing. And I said, what am I going to do? Oh, I don't have any money to get a facelift. Oh, I can't even afford Botox. And the Lord said, repent. <laughs> and I will transform that head. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Ah! Just getting excited, brother. <laughs> I like getting excited. Can't help it. The spirit wells up in me. Mega might light. The light. This is the light that gives might. Hey? I'm really usually a shy person. You know what I mean? I don't know how to speak. I don't know what to say. I'm uneducated. I'm untrained. It must have been with Jesus. That's what they said. These men are these men are untrained. They ain't been to Bible college, you know. They're, they're, they're uneducated. They said, oh, well, they must have been with Jesus. How could they know such things? Lovely. It was sort of like uh, Brother Fred. Brother Fred's not here today. But Brother Fred, see, the, the, the mega might light came when, when Brother Fred got water baptised up in uh, Margate Beach there. And he said to his family later on, it's like I've been there before. But actually, in reality, you know what? You know, people call it deja vu or something. But you know what it really is? When I used to travel around preaching, I'd load my car up, my ute. I have a big box in the back, load it up with literature, and I'd just drive as the Spirit led. I'd just drive and drive until I heard the tin, the, the trunk in the back go, start to jump up and down and get empty then I'd turn around and I'd just drive back through all different cities and back home hey? and I'd go to different places that I'd never been and it was like I'd been there before and you know what the Lord said to me no you're just in my perfect will you're in my perfect will hey? you're in my perfect will right here and now just like Brother Fred, he said, I'm sure I've been here before with the same people under the water, water baptised. It's like I've been there before. No, Brother Fred, no, 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 no. You are in God's perfect will. You know, it's God's perfect will that we repent. It's part of the Mega Might Light series. Hey? It, it's part of... <laughs> yes. Uh, it's part of... God's perfect will is that you repent. And you lay down your your lordship and let him be lord. It, it, it's God's perfect will that we be water baptised and bury that old man that died. It's God's perfect will that we be filled with his spirit and empowered with the Megamite lion, with the Holy Ghost. It's God's perfect will that we continue in the Megamite lion. That we continue in the word, being saved to the uttermost. Come on, please. It's our choice, isn't it? Do we want to be in fa Father's will? Hey? Do, we, do we want Father's love? Then we don't whinge anymore. Nobody loves me because you've got the love of Father. John 14, 23 to 24. If you do what Jesus says, Father will love you. And then Father and Jesus will come. And make their dwelling in you. Amen. Talk about Megamite light. Hey? It's your choice. Do we want that? Do we want that? Hey? And Brother Fred got that realization through the Megamite light. And he started to read the word, the, the Megamite light, and the Megamite power starts to come on us when we walk in the mega might light because that's where our might and multiple and uh, 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 awesome might and power comes from from God to overcome all problems 
There was no way I could overcome alcohol. Alcoholics Anonymous. They tried to help me. I said, no. I said, no, 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 no. This is no good. This is not, I'm not changing. I'm the same. Then I tried the gym. Wow. Uh, I was running to the gym. And then I go to the gym and work out. And then I'd run a 10 kilometer run for the day. Then I'd go home and I'd drink gallons of orange juice. And, and then I'd, I, I'd be doing extra push ups and sit ups. I was looking like Bruce Lee, but still the same person. Didn't change me. The inner man, I'll join the army. That's what I'll do. The ways of men seem right. I'll join the army and I'll become a soldier. Then I'll be able to get rid of the alcohol. That's what I'll do. Oh, I'm clever, aren't I? I'll become a bigger drunk when I join the army. Hey? Oh, I'll become a bigger drunk. Oh, it actually destroyed my army career. Hey? And I'm leaving the army and then I rode down the road on a Harley Davidson with no shirt on and no shoes and my helmet I tied on the back and broke the law because I was a law breaking sinner. And then I had my DFRDB, Defence Force Retirement Benefit Money in my pocket and I was king of the road, you know. Ah, I just rode down that highway and singing to myself, I'm on the highway to hell. And I was, I was. I was on the highway to hell, because no? <laughs> I had no might to fight the fight of faith faithfully for Father to the finish. I had no, let alone mega might. I had no light. I was in darkness, blind, leaning the blind. But then I laid hold of the mega might light, the power of the Word of God. Power of the word of God. God said, what did he say? Let there be light. 60 times and then it, there was light. No, he never. He said it once. Let there be light. He didn't go, oh, let there be light. No, he just said, let there be light. Let there be a firmament. No, not yet. Hang in there, there's still a bit more. <laughs> You get a good view from the pulpit. You can see everything going on. <laughs> really encouraging. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. We can be born a new person through this mega might light. A whole new person. New creation. Huh? Isn't this great to know? I mean, we can confront anything with this kind of understanding and knowledge. We can just walk, you know, walk on with love in our hearts. God, of course, speaking of love. And you'll never walk alone. Walk on, walk on. Hey, walking on with Jesus. And you you won't be bogged down. You won't be jealous. You won't be looking at him comparing him. Looking what others have gotten. Oh, yeah. Looking at the other one. And jealousy and covetousness. You know, trying to keep up with the church down the road that allow all kinds of sin in it. You know what I mean? The bigger the church, the wider the doctrine. Just that so happens we got a narrow doctrine here. We're the narrow-minded people in the big wide streams. Eh? We walk the narrow road. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Difficult be the going thereby, and few are they that choose the narrow road. Few. Few find the narrow gate. Why? Because only few are looking for the narrow gate. You tell me people today are looking for the hard road? Looking for a difficult road? Everyone in town's looking for an easier way, aren't they? Everyone wants a Jason recliner. Come on. But the prophets 
pillow is a stone, isn't it? Whoops. Very good. <laughs> Proverbs. <laughs> Crease lightning. <laughs> Thought we had Bruce Lee in our midst for a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> brother Philip is from Paddy. Yeah, God bless you, brother. Make a light, light. We have that. Hey? Who remembers Gideon? And he was he was hiding the rations in, in the wine press. What a place to put wheat. And, and, and the angel of the Lord said, what are you doing? Like, hello? What are you doing, Gideon? And Gideon was saying, oh, you know, he's all naval watching, you know. Oh, I'm the least in my father's clan. And, uh, I, I'm just... I'm just this, you know, and I'm only, you know. He said, hey, hey, hey. Go in this might of yours. Go in this mega might light. The light had shone. And Gideon did, didn't he? That's all you need. You only need someone to tell you the truth. Hey? We only need, let, let's read it. Let, let, let's go to Judges. Can we go to the Old Testament into Judges? Hey? Chapter 6, Old Testament. Hey? You light up my life. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, nothing to do with Oprah Winfrey, which belonged to Joash, the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianite. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, Lord, the Lord is with you, you mega might light man. No, you mighty man of valour. And Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord was with us, why am I like this? <coughs> why is it like this? Hey, why has all this happened to me, to us? And and where are all your, where's all his miracles? Hey, which are our fathers told us about, saying, "Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us, delivered us into the hands of the Midianites." And then here's the kicker. This is the punchline. Verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, "Go." You mega might light man. <laughs> Go in this might of yours and you shall save the Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Listen to me. Go, you mega might light man. Hey? <clears throat> the Lord speaks, the light shines and says, Hey, I'm telling you. Don't worry about what the devil's telling you. Don't listen to the devil. He's telling you you're a drunk. He's telling you you're schizophrenic. He's telling you you're you're a loser. He's telling you you're a prostitute. He's telling you you're uh, hated. You're unwanted. No, he's not. Hey, hey, listen. God's telling you. God's telling you. You can walk in the might of the light, and you can. You can have the victory. If you just listen to what the Lord says, that he made you in his likeness. Hey? It's us. We get ourselves into these fixes. You know that drugs, we know about drugs and alcohol, opens the doors of hell, doesn't it? In our lives. I'll tell you. I've seen my brother. My brother was two years older than me and he died when he was 46. And I seen my brother, quiet, handsome man. I can show you a photo. Very handsome man. Tall, dark and handsome. And I seen him just fade away. Just fade away because of drugs, because of alcohol. Southern Comfort in those days had cocaine in it. And he'd drink it like water. He'd be riding his motorcycle with a joint hanging out of his mouth. And he'd have a wallet... And in the wallet, he'd have three, at least three tabs of LSD. And that's the way he lived. I tell you, he lived 
on drugs. I seen him just fade away and then I seen the fear come through the drugs, the spirits, the doors were open, fear, paranoia, schizophrenia as they call it, but it's just the powers of darkness flooded his life. And then I seen his face, even his face changed and it becomes sickly looking and I said, when I got born again, see I was, I was on booze at the same time, I was no help, but then I got born again and then I visited my brother and I said, you need to be born again, the Lord will deliver you and he prayed with me and then I water baptised him and when he come up out of the water, he looked like a new man, as the Lord promises. Anyone be in Christ, they're a new creation, new not Alcoholics Anonymous patched up. Not some course. Not some drug alcoholics or, or, or what is it? Drugs Anonymous. That's a course. I'm talking mega might light power. I'm talking the power of God. New creature. Totally new. Just like me. I used to shake like a packet of magic noodles. I tell you. But I'm a new creature. I have no interest in alcohol. I have no interest in drugs. I have no, no interest in nicotine or cigarettes. It's like I've never touched a cigarette. As I stand here today, 29 years later, it's like I have never, ever touched a cigarette. God bless me. My son and my daughter were born from drug-free parents. My wife doesn't drink. She never drank. She never take drugs. She didn't smoke cigarettes. My son and daughter, they have no ailments. My son and daughter, they are never at the doctors. Ever. They're never at the doctors. Drug free. Alcohol free. Born from two people who are free from these things. And I tell you what, their health is great. Mega, might, light, forward slash, knowledge of God, I tell you. The ways of men and, see, men and women seem right in their own mind, but it leads to destruction. But the way of the Lord is righteousness, joy and peace through the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit of God leading us. Listen, we're here today because the Spirit of God brought us here to hear this. And there's something in this message for everyone. You might not get it all, but there's one thing that stood out to you today. The Holy Ghost emphasised one thing to each one. That's why we don't have children's church. Where is it? Where's children's church in the Bible? We don't have that. Hey? We're all children of God. I'm a child of God. Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. Suffer them to come. In other words, Jesus said, let me teach the children. And my children, i got to tell you, they do things that make me want to scream sometimes, but I'm only going by what other people say. Gee, your children are so respectful and well-mannered, they're this, they're that. Why? Because of the mega might light. Mega might light. Not because of me. I just taught them that way. I said, this is the way, children, let's walk in it. I tell you now, we are the problem. It's our choice. Do we want the mega might light? Do we want to walk in the word of God? Do we want to... Joshua said, you choose today what you're going to do. You're going to go your way? You're going to go the way of culture and traditions of men? They ain't going to help you. Or you're going to go the way of the Lord? I tell you, the devil wants you to go your way. He wants you to be like Elvis and Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. No, we've got to do it his way. Jesus said, I am the way. That's where the mega might light. Gideon, bang. He ended up taking the Midianites. He ended up overcoming because he listened. James, he says, be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to get angry. Quick to listen. Gideon listened. 
He did listen. And he said, if God's calling me a mighty man of valor, I must be a mighty man of valor. I must be. God is not a liar. Hello? What else did the Lord say? He likes that. I like. Hang on. Later on we can do that. We can talk all afternoon. We can. Hang on. <laughs> Just topping up. You know what I mean? And the Lord Jesus, he says to us, the Lord Jesus tells us, He says, if we abide in the Megamite light, if we abide in the word, live there, not go once a Sunday, oh, Sunday, oh, we better go down to church, you know, just to please mum. Oh, how much longer? Gee, I can't wait to get back to my sin, you know. No, we abide. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We live there. That's my address. <laughs> That's my permanent res residential address. Here. This is it. That's where I live and abide. You'll go free. If you abide in the truth, he'll set you free. Free from what? Free from what? You know what? And God knows what? I don't know what. What? It's certainly not that wattage. What? It's Megamite light. Whoa! What? Oh, I didn't do nothing. Megamite light wattage. Powerful. How powerful? Go on, tell me. Jesus said, I, on his own, is the light. Of the world. Woo! Show me a, a fluorescent light. Hang on. I'm just going to turn the light on my phone. That's all man, the light man can make. What about your car? What about your lights on your car? Uh, not yet, not yet, brother. Uh, just give me a minute. Any minute now. Won't be long. Just stay there on the operating table, please. I don't want to see you going out the door with the drip in your arm. Just stay there. Don't move. <laughs> Light of the world. Could you imagine the world following Jesus? Oh, look. Forget it. It'd be just so beautiful. Oh, it might be like heaven, you know what I mean? Everyone that you know walking in, the, in what Jesus said. Well, there'd be no brawling. There'd be no brawling. There'd, there'd be no divorce. There'd be no hatred. There'd, there'd be no stealing. There'd be no uh, molestation and pedophilia and, and rape. There'd be none of that. Because Jesus doesn't tell you to do that. Isn't that wonderful? That mega might light. You know what I mean? Just shining in my heart, it is. <laughs> I want everyone to have it. Everyone. And then every day is a jubilee day. I've only scratched it today. The Megamite. We don't have Megamite light too. We're going to end up with a hundred in this series. hundred messages. Gideon. Gideon. What about our website? You ever been, you been to our website? Our YouTube. We have... Nearly 1,400 hours of preaching on our YouTube. Talk about mega might light. It's setting people free all over the world. The Filipino pastor, all the studies and certificates on the wall amount to nothing. And then he found this little YouTube station and this little website, Facebook, and said, wow, I want you to teach me. Do you think that's miraculous? It's unbelievable. The, the Facebooks and the YouTubes are full, <clears throat> overflowing with teachers. Hey? 
You talk about the Megamite light shining, see? Bringing liberty, hey? Making, making people's lives worth living all because of Jesus. Can someone say amen, eh? Giving people the might to fight. We got 500 spiritual letters that the Lord gave me. 500 alone. You know what that is? If you read one each week, that's 9.6 years. If you, if you read two each week, that's five years of reading. Free of charge. And in those letters, you'll mount up with wings like eagles. You'll rejoice. You, 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 you will see who you really are. If you're born again, you're a child and you're walking in the truth, a child of the Most High God. If you're not born again, you're a lost child of God. You're not what the God of this world, the devil's trying to tell you, you are. You are not that. He's a liar. That devil is a liar. He's the father of every lie. You see, Gideon... Gideon was a man of God. He had a clan. He had a little army. The devil lied to him. Ah, you're just down there. You're not going to do anything. God's not with you. Hey, he said to Gideon, God's not with you. But the Lord made sure he got the good oil. He said, hey, you mighty Man, mega might, light man, you mighty man of valour, arise, I am with thee. Do you need anyone else with you? When I first started my ministry that the Lord gave me 29 years ago, you know who I had with me? No one. No one. No pastor, no church, no Bible, no nothing. And I didn't even know. Where's John? Oh, uh, like, duh. But when I heard his voice, say to me, I called you with a holy calling. I called you to proclaim my word in a dark land, Australia, in a dry and dark land. When I heard that, nothing stopped me. No one has dropped me. Many tried. They've tried to kill me. They've set me on fire, the Muslim. They, they've beaten me. They've taken me to court. They, 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 they've slandered me. They've thrown mud at me day after day. No one can stop me. As one of the a disciples from this fellowship said on the, uh, where the Muslim uh, set me on fire, Nothing can stop this man, only death. That's it. And I won't die until Father says, I'm taking you home now. The time will come when I call you home. The time will come when I call you home. But till that day, proclaim my word. Have a drink. <laughs> Drink of the waters of life freely. Don't put a price tag, you know, like the big TV preachers. Faith book. Oh, what's that on the back? Oh, it's a price tag. <laughs> Faith? Price tag? Uh, no. <laughs> it's like chalk and cheese, isn't it? It's like chalk and cheese. Two different substances. Faith on the front. On the back, a price tag. Uh, no, not really. The apostles didn't operate like that. They're fakes. They're faults. And there's many, 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 many of them. You know how I know there's many? Because many Pacquiao is one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Close. No, because many take the wide road. 
And you can do anything you want on the wide road and go to heaven. You know what I mean? You can't forfeit your salvation. You know, I'm washed in the blood. I've been born again. I'm sealed. I've heard them all. Salty the seal. I've heard them all. But I said, that what does the scriptures say that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him? Then you've got Romans 11, 22. What does it say? It says, if you continue in the Megamite light, you will be saved. You will not be cut off. Can someone say amen? Hey, isn't that wonderful? What about, um, who else have we got? Uh, not just Gideon. We have a host of others. Hey? I mean, look at the plants. Look at the vegetation. Look at, look at the birds and, and, and the wildlife. And life itself needs light. You can't grow anything. You know what? You're never going to grow without Megamite light. You, you just be a bearded baby for the rest of your life. Without the knowledge of God, we don't grow. Nothing grows without light. And you see all the things that grow, the herbs, the spices, the, the crops, everything. Look how much grows with light. Now listen to me. Well, this mega might light is far beyond that light. It's his word. And you know that Jesus puts his word, brother, the, the Lord puts his word above, the Lord puts his word above his own name. That's how important the word, the Megamite light is. It's not just, it doesn't give you might, I tell you. It makes you into a spiritual giant. Even though you look, you might look like the runt of the litter. You might look like King David going on to a giant's battlefield. But at least he, David went on to the field and the giant was standing there. But his brothers didn't. And they were three times the size of David. And they had spears and javelins that, that David couldn't even lift up. But they wouldn't take the giant. David went on there with mega might light. David had the understanding and the light and the knowledge. As soon as he got on that battlefield, he said to the giant, Hey, you, big fella, the Lord's put you in my hand. Come on. It's time to go to sleep. The Lord's put you in my hand. That's the revelation light. Mega might light. And then he got his one stone. He carried five. David had five stones, but he only needed one. Crack. Whoa. And that old giant was... And everyone's watching. Will he go down or will he just get angrier? And... Next minute, boom! And the dust was pluming all through Israel. <laughs> and then David walked over. Grabbed the giant sword and shunk, chopped his head off and said, There you go, fella. Who's the victorious now? God said, Set my people free and let them go. Mega might lied. Went home and hung, hung the giant's head on the wall. Hey, taxidermist did. Said, That's what happened to the last bloke that upset me. <laughs> Jesus, son of David, have mercy on you. Mega might lie. But you can't do it, can you? You can't. Oh, some big bloke's yelling at you in the street. Yeah, stop that preacher, man. I'll smash you. Oh, make my day. Bring it. Come on. Hurry up. Get it over and done with. Lord, don't charge him for it. Put it on my account. Come on. You want a drink before you start? Oh, oh I... okay, I'll have some of that. Oh, hey, this is all right. 
Oh, sorry, man. I didn't mean to. Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me read it. Let me read it in Acts 7, verse 16. Then he knelt down and prayed out with a loud voice. Loud voice. He was, he, he was crying out here. He, he, he was war crying. Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he had a slave. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoo! He's going to wake up in glory. He had a slave. See the mega might lie. You can confront any issue. We don't have to go into fisticuffs. We don't have to get angry and spitting and carrying on and, and, and taking vengeance. I'll get you back for this. Uh, you're not walking in the light if you do that. You're not walking in the light. And you have no power. You have no might to fight the fight of faith faithfully for Father to the finish. Can you say amen today? Amen. Ain't it wonderful to know Jesus? We got, we got it all. We are Father and Son and Holy Ghost, angels and brethren in the Word of God. We got it all. Let's press on. <coughs> we got love and faith and joy and peace. I'll pray for you when you pray for me. We got it all. Let's press on. Don't be dismayed. Don't be down. Because we're fighting this fight for a crown that will not perish nor grow old. Great cloud of witnesses waiting out there to meet you in heaven and say, Amen, brother. Amen, sister. We got it all. Aye? We got it all. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Where do we go to? Where do we go from here? So, let me say this on finishing. That, let me say that. Samson was another one. Samson. Audrey looking man. You know, he didn't have the big pecs. and He's just an Audrey looking bloke, you know. And he... Had this mega might light. He trusted in God. Even to the very end when he was not doing what the Lord said. He said, Lord, just give me one more burst of the mega might light. Hey? One more burst. And the Lord did. But Samson was just an ordinary man without the power of God. And the Lord done it in a very simple and peculiar way. He said, let your hair grow long. And he said, that's where your strength will be. Isn't that amazing? That the Lord done it like that. And, and as soon as they cut his hair, that was cutting across the agreement and the covenant that Samson had with God. Because he told Samson, don't tell anyone. You know, there's certain things that a minister, God says, don't tell anyone. That I don't tell anyone. Not even my wife. Certain things. I don't tell anyone. It's sort of like, you know, the, the secret of the recipe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Always leaving Jesus the, uh, the theme. You know what I mean? That he's... I'd like to leave a little bit of mystery there. You know what I mean? Don't tell anyone. And old Samson ran up grabbed the gates of the city, 1,200 pounds each. Uh, pulled them off the hinges. The hinges were about a foot by a foot, cast iron, <laughs> riveted on with javelins. <laughs> and he went for a run, bit of a morning run, and then he went up onto the mountain and threw the gates in to the city. You think about that. Mega might light. He couldn't have done it unless he had the light or the knowledge that God was with him. 
we know that because the last feat, he said, just one more time, Lord. Just one more time. He knew it wasn't his strength. He knew it was the might of God. That's how I stand. Otherwise, I'd just be a dribbling drunk once again, going to sleep at night with my head in my meal and my dear mum, who I loved so much, but not as much as Jesus, uh, pull my head back and said, you'll be right, love. And I go, oh, shut up, mum, I'm sick of hearing it. I'm not right. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Mother's love for her son. <laughs> I still love her, you know. I led her to Jesus. I wanted to do something spectacular with her, you know, for her in her life. The Lord said, I'm going to give you the privilege to lead your mum to me and introduce her to me and I to her. And I know I'll see her again some sunny day. We'll meet again. Don't know when, don't know how, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. We will, I know, by the witness of the Spirit. She loved the Lord up to the light she had, up to the knowledge she had. Amen? Amen. So our message today on the 18th of the 12th, 216 is Mega Might Light. The light that gives might. And everybody said, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus.